morning and welcome back to my channel. So I'm super excited today because I am doing my very first day in the life and I'm excited to share my journey with you of what I typically do on a day-to-day -day basis, especially during this aggressive diet phase, this aggressive fat loss phase. So I've actually, if you've been watching my videos, I've been kind of reporting that I've not been, I've been feeling quite energetic. The results have kind of, they were good at the start and then they slowed down. And I've just readjusted my calories for the last week. And I've got to say, I'm starting to feel the effects of rapid fat loss. And for me, what I tend to feel is just, a, just I just simply get hungry. Like I'm finishing my dinner, already thinking about breakfast the next day. So that's a sign that I know I'm in that phase of kind of rapid fat loss. So yeah, look, let's um, have some fun today. Nothing too serious. I'll just give you snippets of what I get up to on a daily basis from work, from exercise, to training, to, you know, is there any education that I do as well? And let's just have some fun with it. Nothing too serious, as I said. And as you see, I get up pretty early. I kind of just get ready. I then get a big coffee, crack on with some work, some deep work, and then, and now I'm about to cook breakfast, which to be honest, by the time I get to this stage, I, all I can think about is having food from the minute I wake up and having my breakfast. We're training legs today. So that means I'm gonna have porridge with banana, um, and some eggs, which I cannot wait. It's so sad to kind of wake up looking forward to your breakfast. But when you're on, when you're dieting and your calories are low, then it's kind of always front of mind. So anyway, I'm gonna go and cook that right now because I am starving and I'll catch you guys after. Right, guys so I just want to quickly run through the supplements that I'm currently taking during this fat loss phase so in no particular order fish oils this is always a great one to have regardless what your training phase is um, it's good for brain health good for your skin hair cognitive function so I take that all year round so that's that one I also take vitamin D3 with K2 um, especially during the winter because not much on sunshine here in the UK um, and then I'm taking boron at the moment. So I have a hormone in my body called SHBG. Leo agrees with me, by the way. That is fairly uh, high. So boron has been shown to lower that hormone, which then means that I have more natural, sorry, more free testosterone floating around, which is more available for the stuff that we want. So I'm taking that one tablet a day. I take zinc because zinc has been shown to also help um, men's natural testosterone levels and the multivitamin which I'm going to go into next has zinc but not enough and to be honest a lot of multivitamins don't quite have the sufficient amounts that our body needs in order to get the benefit from that mineral or vitamin so it's always good to take this as a almost like a filler but then take the things that you really need more of take them separately as well so this is my filler it's a multivitamin without iron because I eat red meat and then I take what's important to me is D3, zinc, and boron. So those are my go-tos. And then last but not least, I take creatine post-workout, five milligrams. This is the most researched supplement. Um, it's great at building strength, building muscle, and I take five milligrams with my protein shake. So just a quick one. 
Sometimes I might sound like I've got peanuts in my mouth and that's because I'm wearing Invisalign traits, which you can probably tell, a bit shiny. And I've also got elastics there and there. Um, so I started this treatment, gosh, it's been what? Almost three years ago now. I can't believe how long it's been. I'm so sick and tired, I can't wait to finish. But um, I then moved to Portugal, so I had to carry over the treatment to a new Portuguese dentist over there. So that took a bit of time. And now I'm back in the UK. So it's been backwards and forwards with uh, changing dentists, but it's been three years. And just a quick word of warning or a bit of advice. If you get a consultation and they tell you it's gonna be six months or a year, then just double it. From my experience, it's taken way longer than they initially said, but it'll be worth it in the end, I'm sure. So yeah, if I sound a little bit funny, it's because I forgot to take these dentures out. But um, hopefully, three months down the road, I will be finito. So guys, it is 12.30 and we've just got to the gym and we are about to hit legs. I think today is legs posterior. I've got to double check, but I'm pretty sure it is. So yeah, looking forward to that. I'm feeling energized. I'm feeling quite good this week. And actually on that note, I think this is really important to point out for, for when, you know, if you decide to ever do a cut or go in a big calorie deficit to lose fat. Now, what works for me and what has worked for my clients in the past as well is making sure that you're having the majority of your calories before that session, especially if you're doing weights. If you're doing weight training to preserve muscle and you're in a calorie deficit, then you need to have the energy on board to be able to perform at the gym. So let's just say, for example, you were to have you know, a 700 calorie breakfast like I did today, porridge, oats, eggs, like, the full works right and then for example only train that's going to give you like what three four hours of like sustained energy if you then go and train at 5 p.m and have a salad for lunch guess what that workout's going to suck you're not going to have as much energy as if, if you've had a big meal two hours before that session so think of it this way whatever you train and you never really want you want to try and keep performance as high as possible when you're at the gym even during a cut. So with that in mind, what I always suggest is regardless of what time you train, have your biggest meal two hours before that, that session because that's gonna fuel your workout, you're gonna feel energized, there's gonna be carbs floating around in your bloodstream and you're just gonna have a much better workout and that's what you want. You don't want a workout to be flat and you're just kind of dizzy thinking about food, wishing you weren't there. You know, yes, those days do happen, especially once you start to cut the calories back even more, but be smart of your calories and make sure that you are fueling yourself at least two hours before the session. So for me, what works really well, I have breakfast around nine roughly, and then at 11 o'clock, I am ready to rock and roll in the gym. Regard. Now, the only caveat to that is if you are doing cardio, then if you're doing less cardio, low intensity, fasted is fine. This is what works for me, by the way. Then that's fine. If I'm doing HIIT training and I only have a coffee, that can make me feel a little bit dizzy and I know that the performance of that session won't be as good. So regardless if you're in a calorie deficit, calorie surplus, the goal should be to always perform at the gym. So make sure you're fueling yourself two hours before that session, ideally around 40, 50 grams of carbs. So I hope that was some good insights. So let's go and crush the leg session today.
Right guys, so just got back from the gym and I've had to come to my office because Leo's having a nap downstairs. I don't normally eat in my office, but today's one of those days where, to be honest, because I've been filming, I'm a little bit behind, so I've not had time to prep my lunch. But what I did do is my gym offers pre-cooked meals that are high in protein. So I picked up one of these and also I'm not having my protein shake today because I've run out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a can of tuna to this meal and that's gonna make it kind of double the protein. So I went for a honey soy prawn with vegetable noodles and this has currently 31 grams of protein, 57 of carbs and 10 grams of fat. Basically 300 and 462 calories. So it looks kind of like that, looks pretty nice. So what I would say though, is if you are picking up food like this on a regular basis, which I normally don't, just make, just remember that these calories aren't gonna be that accurate. So I always like to account for roughly 20% where there's a margin for error. So just make sure that you keep that in mind. And you know, if you're buying all of your food out, then you probably need to just cut back on 20% of the calories from your total goal. So as I said, I'm gonna stick a can of tuna in here. So it's gonna be a whopping uh, 60 grams of protein and then I'll have my dinner this evening and we'll be good to go. So let's go and enjoy this. Right guys, I am literally in the middle of eating my lunch, this lunch that I've showed you and I just felt the need to stop eating and just share this with you because this is ridiculous, right? There is absolutely no way on this planet that this meal is 460 calories and, and only seven, uh, 57 grams of carbs. This is covered in sweet and sour sauce. The bottom of it was like a soup. Like it's ridiculous, it's so, so sweet. Like let me, let me show you. I'm not sure if you can, t I'm not sure if you can tell, but it, there's just so much, there was so much sauce on this. So much sweet and sour sauce. And I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but that stuff is calorific, very calorific. So this is the issue if you're relying mainly on food that isn't cooked by you. These companies can get away with murder when it comes to adding calories on their labels. Of course they want things to taste good. And of course they're aware, especially a company that's targeting people at the gym, that people are conscious of the calories. So there is absolutely no way on earth this has the calories and macros it has. I need to add another 200 calories to this meal easily. But I know a lot of people wouldn't do that. They just wouldn't know. They would trust that the, these calories are correct. Yeah, it's annoying because now I've got less food for dinner, but I just want you guys to be well aware that you know, if you're eating a lot of food that's been pre-cooked, chances are the macros are, are kind of off. It gives you a ballpark estimation, but this is living proof that something with that much sauce is gonna be so, so, that's so sweet. It's like a sweet and sour sauce. It's like honey almost. There is no way that this has 460 calories. So I'm just gonna finish it. I'll have to readjust my macros, but guys just be super aware that they want food to taste good and they want the calories to be low. And um, yeah, if you're gonna eat out a lot, you need to take that into consideration. Right, so it's 7 p.m. and I'm about to now go and prep dinner. And I'm not gonna lie, by this sort of time, I start to get really tired. I think because I get up so early, my body, when it comes to like seven, eight o'clock, I can definitely feel that my body's starting to shut down, which isn't a bad thing. It means that I get into a good sleep cycle, sleep routine, which um, I'm quite lucky I sleep well at night. So let me quickly run you through what's on the menu for today. So we've got some 5% minced beef, which I'm gonna just pan fry with no oil. And then I'm gonna add some of the seasoning, uh, Cajun seasoning onto that. And then we're gonna have that with some plain basmati rice. And I'm gonna put some of this pak choy. This is really nice, by the way. I like to put this um, on a really hot pan, little bit of oil and some garlic, 
and then just put it on a, on a hot pan for maybe like five minutes and it just goes a little bit crispy. That's really good. So we'll have that. And then what else is happening? I'm just, I'll just hit the showers and then I have a couple more supplements, which I will show you what I take before bed, which really, really helps my CNS, which stands for central nervous system. And it just aids in recovery when you're when you're kind of pushing things in terms of like stress to your body with calorie deficit, weight training, cardio, um, everything that goes on as well with like business and stuff. So it's just good. Like magnesium is a supplement I've done a lot of research on and the experts reckon that the whole world is deficient in magnesium. So everyone could do with supplementing with that. Obviously do your research and make sure that it's a good fit for you. Um, and then guys, that's, pretty much it like um i mean look i know that i'm not in dubai going to beach clubs and like look how great my life is like it is the day-to-day -day stuff is boring right i mean i love what i do and it doesn't feel boring to me although it looks boring but not much really happens it's just work gym eating good food spending time with the family with leo and just kind of rinsing and repeating um so it might not look sexy, but this is real, this is authentic. I know that a lot of people on social media sometimes kind of portray only the best bits, but I just want this to be real, to be honest, and for you guys to get a bit of an insight as to what an average day looks like um, in my life, really, especially during this uh, diet phase. So I'm gonna cook this up, I'll try and get some snaps, and then I'll show you what supplements I have just before bed. What a day it has been. I'm absolutely exhausted. I think it's like 10 p.m. now, which is way past my bedtime. Um, so guys, with the reading, that's something that I have challenged myself this year from the start of the year to read for about 20 or 30 minutes before bed because reading really helps my brain to relax and to kind of just switch off from social media, switch off from technology in general. And it's actually been shown to, you know, reduce stress and just take your brain to a more relaxed state. So if you're someone that struggles with sleep, I would highly recommend it. Start low, 15, 20 minutes at night and try not, the secret is for you to then not look at your phone afterwards. So you wanna just transition from, from breathing into sleeping, uh, keep the lights nice and low and it really does help me out. And it's something that I recommend to all my clients. So regarding supplements, there's one more that I take just before bed and that's a magnesium blend. So as I mentioned before, magnesium is a mineral that we are all deficient in. And I really notice it that when I'm training really hard and my body's under a lot of stress, whether it be from exercise, HIIT training, being in a calorie deficit, magnesium helps support your central nervous system, also known as your CNS. So if you're someone that's struggling with recovery, then maybe look into it. Um, I really recommend getting a blend rather than just like a cheaper magnesium, which would be like a magnesium oxide, because a blend is gonna have the magnesium chains that your body can absorb. So you're gonna actually get the benefits of magnesium rather than something that's cheap that will just make you go to the toilet. So I wouldn't recommend that. So magnesium oxide is the one you wanna stay well away from. Trust me on that one. So guys, that's pretty much it for today. I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you again on Sunday for a new video.